Hi, this is your narration for chapter 30. So um, in these next few narrations, we're going to be talking about the endocrine system. And we're going to start with the pituitary. A little bit of patho review here. Uh, look at your pituitary hormones. Remember that our, we've got your hypothalamus first in the endocrine system. Then we've got your pituitary gland, anterior and posterior. Okay, we've got different hormones coming from the anterior um, than we have from the posterior. So take a look at these here. We've got um, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin from your posterior lobe. And then we've got a bunch of them from the anterior lobe. All right, so when we talk about... All right, so when we talk about the anterior pituitary and when we talk about hormones in general, remember that a lot of these hormones can be used to supplement a dysfunctional gland, but we can also use them for a lot of testing um, procedures as well, okay? So the first one we're going to talk about is cosyntropin. This is synthetic ACTH. So ACTH is adrenocorticotropic um, hormone, and that stimulates the adrenal glands um, to release cortisol. Without cosyntropin, your adrenal glands um, aren't stimulated, okay? And so what we do is, yes, we can supplement this in people who don't have this particular hormone. We also, though, determine whether you have adrenal insufficiency, which we know is Addison's disease, um, if it's from a malfunctioning adrenal gland or it's from if it's from lack of this hormone. So as an example... If you inject this hormone into a person whose pituitary is not working correctly, but adrenal glands are, the adrenal glands will release cortisol in response. If you inject it into somebody whose adrenal glands are not working, they will not. And that's how we can figure out whether your, your Addison's or your adrenal malfunction is primary or secondary. Somatropin and somatrem are actually recombinant growth hormones. Um, they actually stimulate skeletal growth in patients with deficient gro growth hormone. This is not the same as achondroplasic dwarfism. Um, this is hypopituitary dwarfism. While they may look the same on the outside, it's not a genetic problem. This is, a, um, this is not a genetic mutation. This is actually a, def a defect in the pituitary gland. So as an example, um, I have a friend whose 8-year-old son, or he's not 8 anymore, but um, when he was eight, maybe he was six, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, he got diagnosed with stage four brain cancer and went through chemo, radiation, or radiation, then chemo, brain surgery, all the jazz. He stopped growing because his pituitary gland was malfunctioning after all the brain surgery and the chemo and the radiation. And so he actually is on synthetic um, growth hormone or recombinant growth hormone to get him to grow. Um, he was, you know, 11 years old wearing size 8 clothes, basically. So um, <clears throat> so that's the difference there. All right, octreotide. Um, octreotide is, a, is um, a medication that is given in the ICU, um, and it is to reduce the symptoms of what we call a carcinoid crisis, which is where certain types of cancerous tumors secrete um, VIP, vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, which causes a ton of of diarrhea, okay? Octreotide actually reduces this um, and also increases their blood pressure. Now, we use it more often in patients with GI bleeds um, and from esophageal varices because it decreases the portal hypertension. Um, so we know that esophageal varices are often caused by a backup of blood from the liver into the esophagus, into the veins of the esophagus. And if we reduce the backup of blood in the liver, then we can reduce the backup into the esophagus. So um, that's usually why you see octreotide given. All right, in the posterior pituitary, um, we've got our ADH, okay? And so when that is synthetic, we've got vasopressin and desmopressin. And they actually are just basically synthetic antidiuretic hormone. So what do they do? Um, well, we will give, um, we will often give vasopressin in a code situation if somebody, um, for somebody who doesn't have a blood pressure in a code, okay, because it will cause, um, it will increase someone's blood pressure. It also helps with um, bedwetting. Um, DDAVP or desmopressin 
um, is comes in a nasal spray and also as a tablet for kids who wet the bed. What it does is they take it before bed or use the nasal spray before bed, and then they stop making urine overnight, wears off by morning, and then they pee again. So um, we use this also to treat diabetes insipidus because remember, diabetes insipidus is the lack of antidiuretic hormones. So all you do is pee. So we give you synthetic until we treat the cause. All right. Review question. When administering octreotide to a patient, it's most important for the nurse to assess which parameter. Pause. Answer this to yourself. This is actually blood sugar. And no, I didn't mention that on the slide, but octreotide actually uh, and can cause labile blood sugars. I can't remember if I said blood sugar or blood pressure, but it's blood sugar. <laughs> um, so we need to closely monitor them. Um, even if they're not diabetic, we will monitor their blood sugars. Patient will be treating so much, will be receiving somatropin. Which disorder do you expect your, pa your patient to have? Pause, answer this to yourself. And that's B, hypopituitary dwarfism. Which effect does the nurse expect to see in a patient receiving hydrocortisone? So think about this for a minute. Hydrocortisone is synthetic cortisol. And um, just like our endogenous steroids, hydrocortisone <clears throat> um, decreases the inflammatory response. It, or not hydrocortisone, yes, hydrocortisone, sorry. Um, cortisone in the, or cortisol in the body, hydrocortisone, tablets or um, injection, prednisone, all of your steroids um, will reduce inflammation. So out of these, an increase in inflammatory leukocytes function, that would be a decrease in them. Um, it actually, re, um, the kidneys will retain sodium and steroids cause hypertension. But reduction of scar tissue formation is a reduce in inflammation. All right, a patient is in pulseless cardiac arrest. Which medication does the nurse anticipate administering? Pause. This would be vasopressin. Like I said, it's part of... Um, ACLS protocol, protocol, which is um, advanced cardiac life support. All right, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to try to do these in little sections so that they're easy for you to download.